All right, so I want to share a really amazing plant. Well, all plants are amazing in their own unique way. Um, I want to talk about Oregon grape, which is a Pacific Northwest very important plant. Um, it's also on the to watch list because it's uh, sensitive to like heavy metals and things like that. Um, so it, since it's on the to watch list, um, that's not um, at risk. It's just to be aware that this plant is like kind of endangered to like keep that in mind. Um, so they're a member of the Berberidaceae family. And so um, there's a couple other members of that family you might be familiar with, like Barberry, um, Ghost Flower, um, there's another one that I can't think of right now, but um, that you might be familiar with. But um, so there's two different kinds. And so there's the short Oregon grape and the tall Oregon grape, which you can kind of see back there. They both look super duper similar. But one is shorter, one is taller. Um, they have different genomes and they totally grow differently and they have different plant ID to them So that's how we know that they are indeed like separate plants. So Since this one's like closer to our trail that we made in our backyard I'm gonna talk about this one because I don't want to go back and mess with uh, the ecosystem that we have built here um, So right here we have the short Oregon grape or Berberus nervosa and I like to remember that one because the tall one's Berberus aquifolium. And so you can really remember that because the leaves are like super shiny. Um, but Berberus nervosa, the leaves aren't as shiny. And I like to think of it as like they're nervous because they're tiny and they're afraid they're going to be like smushed. So they get like nervous. Um, and then so if you come in a little bit closer, you can see that the leaves have like points on them, right? So really, so there's thick you know very very thick kind of leathery but they also have these like margins on them and so a lot of times people mistake this for holly but i have a really good example of holly right here and so holly is extremely invasive to the pacific northwest and um, it really didn't start getting as bad as it is until a couple years ago holly really became like something that people were planting in their gardens and then the birds eat the seeds and then you know poop them out into the forest and then all of a sudden we have holly and then the reason why holly is so such like a problem to the ecosystem is because their roots kind of like grow around the plants around them and they just like reach outwards grabbing and holding the other plants so like removing the root ball often means like removing a lot of other plants unless you can like really get in that soil separate the plants and so it's not an easy removal so um yeah so these plants the Oregon grape like always have these like beautiful yellow flowers. Sure. So beautiful and like tiny. So many petals. Yeah. Oh, can we find the male part? There it is after all those petals. Wow, those are a lot of petals. And then the male part. See those what like four stamens. We remove the stamens. And then we have the female chamber right there in the middle there with the pollen um, sucker on top. So that's the female right there, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but um, that's a really important way to identify plants is to be able to identify the male parts and the female parts because those are specific to families as well as specific to, um, as well as specific to the plant itself, um, determining between like species and things like that. So, um, one thing I want to do is, oh my god, what? Okay, guys, I totally didn't even realize we have wild strawberry in our yard. Okay, this is insane because I've always wanted to find wild strawberry in the wild, and here it is in my very own backyard. I'm so lucky, and wild strawberries are like tiny they're like teeny tiny and each plant will probably produce like two and the season is super short and the the animals love them too so you're like fighting for your life to get a berry right and also we don't want to steal from nature but if I get to try one wild strawberry in my life which now I probably <laughs> will get the opportunity to I'll be one happy botanist um, so yeah fun fact about wild strawberries they are one of the only um, truly sweet occurring things in nature besides sugar so, fun fact, everything else that we know as sweet is made to be that way. Um, so, the most important medicinal fact that you deserve to know about this plant is it has this alkaloid in it called berberine. And so, most people think it's um, only in the root, but it's in the stem as well. 
and the berberine is very significant because uh, how do I explain this so in this day and age antibiotic resistance is huge and that has a lot to do with the fact that the bacteria have developed this pump on the back of their like little bacteria bodies that like spits out the antibiotics and so that's why you have to keep taking them and if you don't take them they develop they become so much stronger and so berber the berberine alkaloid actually disables that pump as long as well as fighting off the bacteria so most of the time when I experience like a bacterial overgrowth you know like bacterial vaginosis or bacterial in my mouth or things like that I will just um, take a little bit of berberine like water it down and uh, apply it but recently I did have to take antibiotics uh, due to my um, nasal and sinus and ear surgery and so when I was taking the antibiotics just to make sure I didn't get an infection I also took Oregon grape so I didn't develop an antibiotic resistance and so you can do that in a tincture tea is not so great it's kind of bitter but you can do it be strong if that's what you need but also you can get a tincture from a lot of places um, as for the berries they're kind of like bluish which again you know a lot of blueberries in the Pacific Northwest and they are they're high in um, antioxidants but they are really bitter with like this tiny little bit of like decadence to them so I only really use them in sauces I make them into a barbecue sauce with mesquite like so a slow smoked mesquite barbecue sauce which is really really good and um, one day I'll get around to like writing that recipe up and like sharing it with everybody uh, but let's see if I can find a good example so you can see the berberine alkaloid right here let's see, I don't want to hurt the plant come on buddy let's do some science there it is so that bright yellow it kind of like doesn't really ooze out it stays in the cambium um, of this plant but it's so bright yellow that is the berberine alkaloid right there so it also could be used as a dye which is really nice and the berries I think culturally have been used as dyes as well so please let me know if you have any questions about this plant and I'm happy to share research with you about the research that's been done about the berberine alkaloid and um, uh, the antibiotic resistance movement so thanks so much <laughs>